Um, so today what I want to do is I want to make sure that um, you guys understand the format of the lab and where to uh, upload or find the resources that you need to complete the lab um, for this particular course. Um, quick reminder, tomorrow between 11.30 and 12.30, if you go to Miramar College and you go to lot three, lot three is when you come from like the Home Depot and you go into uh, towards the admin building and you go to, towards the left, that's transit center towards the uh, parking lot structure, but uh, go to parking lot three and the lab tech and a representative from KLM will be there. Um, the lab tech will give you the chemicals and equipment that you will need for the course. That's free unless you don't return it, then they'll charge you. And then um, the KLM representative will give you the other equipment that we'll need. These, these are some, some of them are consumables, but uh, you will need to purchase that ahead of time. So if you go to the syllabus, there's a website there and you can pre-order it. And all you gotta do is drive up and they'll get your name and they'll hand you over the kit. Okay, so <clears throat> again, uh, for those of you who just logged in, uh, this will give you an idea of how the lab is operated. Remember that this is a lab, but you guys get to do the experiment at home. You don't have to come to campus. I don't know how the other colleges are doing it, especially since um, we didn't really know when we were planning whether we were going to meet face to face. But I guess it's sort of, uh, if you got vaccinated, it's safe now. But uh, we're still doing this online lab here at Miramar because uh, I actually developed this course way over 10 years ago and it was put in hiatus and it was uh, dusted off when uh, this COVID uh, pandemic hit. And um, I think it, it's okay in that it allows us to do the experiments that we would normally do at Miramar College. Okay, so first thing I want to do is go over the syllabus, make sure we're, we're on the same page in terms of the philosophy and how you guys are going to be graded. And then I want to go into Canvas and show you um, where the resources are and then how you're you guys are going to be doing the experiment and how you're going to upload your results. Okay, uh, critical part of the experiment, and these are wet labs as opposed to dry labs, is that you guys will be taking photos of certain steps in the procedure. And when you take the photos, you gotta put your student ID in front of them to identify that it's actually you who is doing the experiment and not some stock photo from a previous class. Okay, so that, that's a requirement and I'll make sure that I put that in the announcement page is that whenever you guys upload a photo, uh, you guys are going to need to put your ID and um, to show that it's really you, okay? Uh, there was a question. Uh, you could either write in the chat or you can unmute yourself and uh, you can fire away. Uh, so, hi, Professor. Um, regarding the student ID, I don't have one. So would it be okay if I just use like my driver's license or just- Yeah, like just that? use your driver's license and just kind of put uh, a sticky over your number because I don't really want to. I just want to make sure it's you, okay? Okay. Uh, so that that's fine. Uh, there's a lot of privacy issues these days. I don't need the number. Uh, I don't even need your address. Just make sure it's 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 you have a photo of you there and your name, of course. Okay. So so that's sufficient. Uh, but if you have a CSID, especially if you're going to to Miramar College, they should have issued you a CSID. Although I don't know how they would do that now because we were on restriction. But any form of ID just sort of hide the number. Okay. Um, that just ensures me that you're, you're the one that's doing it. So let me go ahead and talk to you guys about the syllabus because I really wanna make sure that you guys understand the format that is required for this lab. The, the experiment, some of them are pretty straightforward. Some of them can be detailed, it's like cooking, okay? If you ever see a, a cooking show, then there's a chef there that kind of tells you what ingredients to put in, how long you have to wait and all that. So um, chemistry is kind of like cooking, you, you have to like, mix the ingredients and then kind of wait for certain things. Uh, but of course you don't want to taste any of the things that you create. Um, so we'll, we will talk about that when, when we get to that point. 
Uh, this, of course, is the course syllabus. Make sure you download the most recent one. Uh, it shows you my contact information. Always remember that when you contact me, the best way to do so is via Canvas. Not so much my SDCCD or my Gmail. Um, if you put it on Canvas, then I know that I have a, uh, something to answer here, and I usually get to it right away. Okay, so you want to just click on that and they'll open up the, the email app and then you can just um, address it to me and then uh, set, fire me an email. And then of course, this is what the splash page will look like when you open up the um, canvas for the course. You'll see 61184, that's one section of Chemistry 100 Lab and the other section 61197. Okay, so we have one shelf for the two class. And of course, they have the announcement page here. But if you want to see the detail announcements, then you just click on that. Um, so this, this will tell you uh, the stream of announcement that's already there. And you can see that one of the first announcement that hopefully you guys saw was the orientation that it was scheduled for today. Welcome page, where to get cheap software, um, how to, this is a very important page. OK, because everything that you submit has got to be in a PDF format. It allows me to go through it quicker. And then I don't have to worry about converting it if it's a different document. And I think PDF is a universal format. So you want to convert that. And this gives you all the techniques to take an image and convert it to PDF, take a document, whether it's Google Docs or MS Word or something else, and convert it to a PDF. Um, how to use your phone, whether you have an Android or an iPhone, and use it as a scanner, actually. And then it'll compress it to one file as a PDF, and then you can up upload that. So these are all um, resources that you guys want to take a look at in order to make sure that when you submit your assignment, it's in the correct format for me to get to and uh, review. OK, so again, that, that's going to be in the announcement. Um, go over here on the home page. You can see that this one has the icon properly. The other one, I think I just forgot to put it in. It, it's uploaded now and everything's current. But this one has the announcement. You click here, the syllabus, the module page. And then if you go to the Google Drive, you just click on that. And here you will find the uh, lab manual. Summer and spring, you want the summer, OK? because it's different from spring, it's up, updated. But you can also go right here and double click on this and you get the whole lab manual and you don't even have to pay, okay? You don't have to pay. At this particular class, you do have to pay for certain materials, consumables and the lab kit, but there is no textbook. Everything's available right here, okay? So this is a PDF and everything's here, but more to it than that, within each section in the module page, each experiment, you can actually download that particular experiment, the data sheet, the, the um, pre-lab and the post-lab. So it's sort of segmented out in the module page. But if you want to see the overall lab manual, it's here, right here. OK, that's a link. Or it's in that home page right there. There's many ways to get the lab manual. It should be the same lab manual because it's always pointing at one source. It's just a different link. Anyway, um, I just want to make sure that you guys know that, that that's what you will see when you open up Canvas. So here is the um, information, contact information, and what you guys will need. What you will need, of course, are safety goggles. And the safety goggles need to be the one that wrapped up. Um, Calculator, scientific calculator, you can use that for the lecture as well. You need a first aid kit because you guys are doing experiments at home. And even though these experiments are fairly safe, you never know. That's why they're called accident. Uh, try and get some nitrile gloves uh, here. Look like this, okay? They look like this. And some people are allergic to latex. So nitro is probably safe. And these things are easily bought, you know, with, with the COVID things, these things came out. You can go to like um, a Walmart, a Target, um, Harbor Freight, they'll, they'll have these. 
Okay. Um, and then there are other things that you will need that I will let you know in terms of um, necessary equipment and supplies. And this will be shown uh, later on in the syllabus. Okay. Uh, so this is your student learning outcome right here. Uh, by the time you leave lab, you guys are going to be able to know the proper uh, procedure and the safety precautions to be able to handle chemical reagents and their waste. Of course, this is written for when you guys are in lab, but uh, we're going to have to kind of stretch some of these things. The ways that you guys are going to create are certainly not, um, well, they could be dangerous in huge quantities, but what you guys are going to do is you're going to take a water bottle know one of those plastic water bottles and just use that as your um, as your container to hold the waste. So if you got a disposable water bottle, don't throw it away. Save it and keep the cap as well because you want to cap it and then pour all the chemicals in there. And it's okay to mix all the chemicals into one container. So that that that's important. Uh, you guys will be able to uh, know how to use common laboratory equipment like graduated cylinder thermometer scales uh, and then uh, most important you guys will be able to make objective observations kind of synthesize what the meaning is come up with some sort of uh, conclusion to interpretation of the results so that's your student learning outcomes um, you guys will be tested on these student learning outcomes based on the lab practical that you guys will be doing in the midterm and in the final, okay? And let me tell you a secret. The midterm and the final lab practical, they're practically identical. And since we can't have you guys come into lab and read a graduated cylinder, it's basically just reading a graduated cylinder off your computer, okay? So, um, but the key to being correct in that lab practicals you got to know how to take make proper readings on measuring devices and that's basically experiment number two so that's your student learning outcome the description of the course um, here all data observations for the experiment must be documented in the worksheet the worksheet is like the lab like like if you take a look at this lab right here these are your worksheet okay let me show you so we, we scroll through and let's take a look at a wet lab. Well, this, this right here is a dry lab. In other words, it's all paper. Basically, lets me know that you understand some of the concept. This course goes hand in hand with the lecture class. So when you're doing a stoichiometry chapter in lecture, you're going to be doing some sort of stoichiometry lab. It parallels the, the lecture at Miramar College. I don't know how, how well it follows uh, Mesa or City, but for this lab and our lecture, it goes hand in hand. Um, let's see, there was a question. Yeah, if you, if you pre-order your kit from KLM, then tomorrow or Friday, they will be there and they will hand you the kit. And uh, if you pre-order and everything's okay, that's all you need to do. Just show them your ID and they'll give they'll give you the kit. The, the woman, I've been working with the woman there for a number of years. She's really nice and she's really accommodating. And then the other person is going to be um, a lab tech. It's going to be at Miramar College, lot three. Okay. It's next to the, it's between the parking structure and the math building. So just take a look at that. Anyway, uh, going back over here, this is a dry lab. See, there are no chemicals that are being mixed or any equipment that's being used. So this is your dry lab. And here's your first experiment. It's called the penny experiment. That's a wet lab in that you have to actually wear your safety goggles, uh, wear your gloves, everything you would do if you were in the lab, okay? And here is the worksheet. Here is what you complete in collecting the data. That's why it's called the data sheet. Uh, if you scroll further down, you will see that there is also a pre-lab. Okay, you have to complete that. Everything's done through these, these um, worksheet. You don't have to keep a lab notebook or anything. You, you complete it through this worksheet, or if you run out of space, put it on a printer paper, white sheet of paper. Don't, try and not use notebook paper, use printer paper. And then that's your pre-lab and this is your post-lab. 
Okay, so that's the worksheet I've been talking about. If you take a look at experiment two, it gives you a description of what that experiment is, tells you the procedure, gives you a little bit of background, tells you what photos you need to take. And remember what I said again, each photo has got to have um, your, your ID there. If it doesn't, then it doesn't count. I've got to make sure that you're doing the experiment. Uh, and in this experiment, there's five photos that are be taken. And everybody has a smartphone. So use your smartphone, OK? Um, that way, it's easy. And then you can just uh, collect all the, the uh, photos together. And then you can zip it, or you can compress it. Make sure it's a PDF, convert it to PDF, and then compress it, and then submit it. And it tells you exactly what the photo should be. And it tells you in the procedures where you should be taking that photo. Okay. And then in the data and observation, that's where you're going to be submitting your photo. So again, here's the worksheet. This is uh, the data and observation. This is where you're actually collecting the data for the experiment. And um, this is your pre-lab. And this is your post-lab. So there's always three components to a wet lab. There's going to be a pre-lab, kind of get you prepared for what the experiment's about, kind of like prime you in terms of what calculations you're going to do. There's the data and observations where you're actually collecting the, the data and you're writing down your observations when you're doing the experiment. And then there's the post-lab in terms of uh, calculating the results or drawing conclusions as to what that experiment was about. Those are the three components. Okay, so hopefully uh, I will talk more about that when, when we uh, get into that part of the discussion today. So um, this that's what this is about. Uh, the, our lab tech this semester is not Calvin. Calvin was our lab tech for the past three or four years. It's going to be Bryce. He'll be out there 11.30, 12.30. Be nice to him, okay? He's actually our, our newest lab tech. We want to keep him around. And uh, he's a really nice guy. Um, if you run out of chemicals, um, because for some reason it wasn't in your kit or whatever, then Bryce is the person to talk to. Let me know. Uh, contact Bryce as well through his email. And then uh, what he'll do is probably come up with the, the chemical, or maybe you're missing an equipment. He'll have that available. And now that we are not restricted, you guys can just drive in and go to his office. It's going to be um, in the S5 building. I think it's S5210. Okay. But um, if you email him, you'll, you'll know. This is the schedule. And in the schedule, we do about two experiments a week. Okay. Or two labs a week. Because there's a distinction between a wet lab where we actually mix chemicals and use um, equipment and a dry lab where do, we do calculations. So um, we're going to be doing two labs a week. And there's a to total of 13 labs. Four of them are dry, eight of them are wet, and one of them is a simulation. OK, so this is the schedule. Notice that on the week of July 19th through the 25th, there's a stoichiometry exercise. That's, I believe, a dry lab. That's stoichiometry calculation. But on the 23rd, that's a Friday, you guys have your midterm quiz and your lab practical. But that, ex that activity, stoichiometry exercise, activity four, lab assignment eight, is not due till the 25th. What I do is I make, I try and make all the assignments, except for, of course, the last one. The last one's due because we don't end on a Sunday. We end on the 13th of August. But the last experiment is going to be due on, um, I believe it's August 13th. That would be a Friday. OK? But generally, experiments are going to be due like Sunday, right before midnight. So don't wait last minute. Because if you're taking my lecture and you're doing my lab, then the labs are due. Two, both labs are due Sunday before midnight. And then if you're in my lecture, you have a quiz also due before Sunday before midnight. And so everything can pile up. You got to make sure you economize your time. OK, so I give you the schedule and the experiments are not open. Like you can't do experiment number four now. It, it's sort of time release so that people don't 
jump ahead and just kind of start doing things before we even cover that in the in lecture. Okay, uh, I believe July fifth to the eleventh experiment is going to be uh, open uh, a week and a half ahead of time. So right now, well, I actually just opened up experiment one and two today because I want to show you how to navigate that in Canvas. But otherwise, it wouldn't have been open until the twenty fifth of June. It, it, these things are going to be time release um, and not just open. Uh, so that you can go in there and you could still go in there and look at the lab manual and explore what to do and you can actually do the experiment ahead, but you can't submit anything until it's open and uh, it tells you that we're ready to go. So uh, we're, I'm not preventing you from working ahead. You just can't submit anything until it's open. Okay, so that that's the schedule right there. Uh, notice that on the 23rd of July, you have your midterm, it's four to six. And on the 12th of August, you have your final 46. Uh, but your midterm will cover experiments one through um, probably activity number three uh, or lab assignments one through lab assignment seven. Okay, maybe eight will be in there, but um, maybe not because uh, stoichiometry is probably coupled in with experiment five and six, which is covering chapter seven. You notice we got three labs that cover chapter seven. Stoichiometry exercise, observing chemical reactions, and counting by weighing via the mole. So that's a pretty important chapter. Anyway, um, take a look at the schedule. Make sure that uh, you allocate time to do these experiments. And you could probably do two experiments on one day. Uh, the experiments themselves, they don't take, they shouldn't take more than an hour. And if you watch my video, I actually walk, do the experiments for you, just like cooking. And you can, you can uh, try and um, mimic what I do, okay? So that's the schedule. Uh, this is how you guys are gonna be graded. There's gonna be a total of 13. See right here, it says lab assignment 13. There's still a 13 uh, lab assignments. Like I said, four dry labs, eight experiments, one simulation. The simulation is the gas law, okay? So they're all 50 points. I decided that I'm not going to weigh one more than the other. They're all 50 points, whether it's a lab that you can do in 30 minutes or it's a lab that requires two hours. They're worth 50 points. What I will do is I will find your worst one and drop it, okay? Whether it's an activity, the simulation, or the experiment, I'll drop that, and then I'll grade you based on the rest. So, so that's why um, if you take 13 minus one, that'd be 12. Each is worth 50 points, that's 600 points. 400 and 200, that's 600 points, as you can see right here, okay? So uh, there's a safety quiz. So safety quiz should be straightforward. It's true, false, or multiple choice. Syllabus quiz, so you gotta read the syllabus. And um, the... Uh, midterm and the final, and those are worth 275 points. I think the safety quiz might be 50 points. The syllabus quiz is worth 50 points. The final is 100 points, and the um, midterm might be 75 points, okay? So 100 for the final. Safety and syllabus are 50 points a piece. That's 200, and then the midterm 75, that's 275 points total. Um, again, your lab technique and participation is important, making sure that you turn things on time. You have a lab practical. Remember I told you you have a lab practical? Lab practical is easy, but it requires you guys to make sure you know how to read a thermometer, read a volumetric flask or a graduated cylinder, read a ruler and read a scale. It doesn't sound hard, but you'd be surprised, okay? Um, so the first one in your midterm is worth 25 points. And then the second one in your finals worth 50 points, total of 75. Secret, the, the midterm and the final, they're practically the same. They just, we just give you different pictures, okay? Uh, and so the total for that is 1,000 points. If at the end of the semester, you have something like 910 points, that's 91%. You've got an A, 
if at the end of the semester you've got 550 points, that's 55%, you've got a D, okay? So uh, you can take your total points and you can divide it by the points to date. Like say we finish the first week. The first week, if you take a look at, you'll see that we have a math dimensional analysis and we have the safety quiz. Safety quiz is 50 points, dimensional analysis, math basics, 50 points, that's 100 points. So if you scored like, uh, for the two combined, 90 points, that's 90 over 100, you've got 90% in the class so far. You're, you're getting an A at that point in time. So I will always update the Canvas uh, site. So if you go to Canvas, this is it right here, and you go to your grade book right here, what you will find in your grade book is there's gonna be a, uh, a line here that says uh, points to date, okay? That'll tell you how many points you've accumulated so far. And then in here in fine print, it'll tell you what's the maximum possible. So I'll take your points to date divided by the maximum possible and that's your percent to date. So you will know where you stand in terms of um, any point in time during a class, you know where you stand in terms of your grade. If you got like a 91%, you've got an A, okay? at that point in time. If you got 78%, hey, you're only 2% away from a B. You're only 2% away from a B. So you, you'll find that in this column in uh, your, the grade book. Of course, the grade book doesn't look like this. The grade book for you guys looks like, uh, let me just see where that is. Uh, go back to home. Let me do a student view real quick. Uh, the grade book for you guys will look like this. It, it's not in a column view. It's actually something like this. But you, you'll, see, you'll see a line item there that says point to date and percent to date. Okay. Uh, yeah, this thing kind of tells you all the assignments that have been put in so far. But you got to be careful about these things because some of these are ghost assignments that are never released. I should just take it off. So it's only going to be the ones that um, have the eyeballs, not with a crosshair or with a slash that is going to be what you're counting, okay? So um, we go back to the syllabus here. So that's how you, you guys are going to be graded. And the, the thrust, the, the majority of points where you guys are going to be graded on are the experiments. Okay, you can see that 400, 200, that's 60% of your grade right there. Uh, the syllabus quiz and the exam, that's another 275 points. And then your lab technique and the lab practical rounds it off. Okay, lab technique, by the way, is also um, based on you guys returning our equipment and the chemical waste at the end of the semester. So if you don't return that, um, you're going to suffer for that. Plus, we charge you. Okay, right now it's free, but if you don't return that scale, we'll charge you. Scale isn't very much, it's under $20, but still, that's $20 that you could use. Okay, uh, so this is the overview of the lab course. And again, we have the midterm right here, and that's the schedule and the final. Okay, lab assignments, I try and define for you the difference between a dry lab and a wet lab. Okay, so you can read that right there. And then um, I tell you about the lab supplies. And um, if you actually scroll down the syllabus further, I actually give you a description of that, okay? So um, it kind of tells you that you got to return the stuff that Miramar gives you. The stuff that you buy from KLM, you keep that, okay? Um, should be okay, clean it up. You can use it as a chemical uh, experiment uh, kit or hand it off, but the stuff that we give you, it'll be in a baggie. Um, you got to return to us because we got to give it to the next student next semester. But KLM, you paid $75 for that, okay? And when I we first started this, I think the, the kit was $150. So I kind of like told uh, the, the, the dean that we need to keep it at a lower price. So that's why we're supplementing the scale, some tongs, some evaporating dish, stuff that would make the kit well over $150.
but because we are supplementing it, you guys don't have to pay that much. Anyway, you, you guys should read this because it kind of gives you an idea of what uh, is expected and um, some of the things that you guys need to know for this particular class, especially since you guys have a syllabus quiz coming up. Okay, syllabus quiz, I think is going to be due. Let me see. All right. Uh, no, it's not here, but it'll be in, in uh, Canvas, okay, in the due date. Let me just kind of take a look at that real quick. You get out of this mode. And if you go to the modules right here, let's uh, get out of this. Uh, let's go to the right here. So I'm going to go to the modules and then uh, scroll through, and you can see that here it is, the syllabus quiz, first thing that comes out, and that's due on the 29th. So if you're in my lecture, you have a syllabus quiz for lecture that's due on the 29th, and for live, you have syllabus. You can do that anytime beforehand, but you need to absolutely complete it before the 29th, okay? And then there's a safety quiz that's this week, and that's due the 27th. That's next, um, I think it's next Monday, okay? Or this Sunday this Sunday, safety quiz, okay? So um, keep that in mind. Uh, you guys will want to read the safety policy and watch the safety video in order to complete that. Anyway, let's go back to syllabus. The rest of these right here is just policy on attendance, keeping up, logging in. You need to log in every week. Uh, to show that you're active in the course. If you are not active in the course because something's coming up, you need to let me know because I will drop you. This question in the chat, are we going to have two different places to uh, campus to uh, pick up? No, there's only one place. KLM and uh, the Tech at Miramar will both be there. You just go to lot three, okay? You don't go to two different places. We're trying to make this as easy for you as possible. So they will both be there. You, you do one-stop shop, well, one-stop pickup, and uh, they'll give you, Miramar will give you the kit, that's free, and hopefully you've prepared for your um, KLM uh, equipment uh, glassware. That'll be in lot three. Lot three is right across the transit center. Uh, it's right next to the math building. And if you look south, as you go into lot three and you go straight ahead, that silver building is the science building. They'll be right there uh, uh, to give you that. So um, let's go back to the syllabus. Here, attendance policy, make sure you read that. How you guys are gonna be evaluated, it tells you right here, we talked about that. This is the grade breakdown again, okay? Again, the 65%, the, um, as you see right here, is a C but I've been known to drop this to 60%. 60%, if you can get 60% of the course, you, you, you can pass this course with a C. Of course, the A is still 90 to 100, the B is still 80 to 89, but uh, 79, 60 to 79 is a C. Passing the course, you're ready to move on to the next level, okay? Uh, the rest of these are just very important information. Talks about uh, honesty policy, talks about um, making sure that you know how to use your calculator, making sure that you, um, when, when you have an exam that shows, ask you to show your work, that you write it on a piece of paper and then you upload it into uh, the question for that particular, um, for that particular quiz, okay? Uh, if you're going to email me, you need to make sure you send it via Canvas, okay? Um, Again, when you finish a quiz or when you finish an experiment, don't expect to see the grade right away. The experiments are gonna be more, more difficult to grade because I actually have to go in hand by hand. Canvas will not be able to automatically grade everything. I've tried to make it easy so that it, it streamlines certain things, but I still need to go in, read your data, make sure you, you're measuring it correctly and make sense of how you did your computation. So sometimes it'll take me about four or five days to go through that, especially since there are 48 of you guys and there are going to be two experiments that are submitted on a Sunday. 
So that's a total of like 96 that are ready for me to review by Monday morning. It's going to take a while. Okay. But you guys will should get an updated points to date. So you know where you stand in the class. Okay. And if you did the experiment correctly, feel confidence that you've passed that particular experiment. Um, the lab can be tedious. If you go through the motions, you'll be able to pass. Okay. Uh, completing an assignment again, right here, you should, you should, you could communicate with a classmate, but when it comes to doing the lab, you have to do it on your own. Okay. Don't share a picture of the results between you and a classmate. I'll be able to figure that out. That's why I want you guys to picture, picture your ID before every photo. Put it somewhere there, take a picture. So go far enough so the picture's there and whatever the equipment or the, the photo described um, is there when you take the picture. And that, that's important to, again, authenticate that it's you who is doing the experiment. I don't know if I told you guys, I told my lecture class, that, but um, in my upper division chemistry class, one of the students hired a foreigner, a PhD student foreigner to do their, their experiment for them. Told them exactly where to find the link, gave them the code for the canvas and all that. That's just bad, okay? That's really bad. Uh, not taking responsibility for your own work. And I get that some of you are stressed, but you know, this is a period where you guys are learning and learning the fundamentals so that when you become allied health workers, especially if you guys are going to be nurses, you know what's going on. And yeah, you might not ever see a balanced chemical reaction again, but just the learning process of um, taking that information, distilling it down, knowing what to do is, is what we're trying to train you guys for. Okay. So anyway, um, pick up read this uh, read this especially the stuff about disruptive behavior fear and um collaboration dishonesty uh always the number one thing that we are always concerned about is your safety so always be cautious when you are doing the experiment especially there's going to be a couple of places where you actually have to light up your alcohol burner Gotta make sure you have a fire extinguisher nearby. Yeah, an alcohol burner is no more dangerous than a match, a, a candle, but you never know, okay? Because you are gonna be burning some ethanol. And if you have the ethanol container nearby, uh, that could be problems. But never had a knock on wood, uh, an issue. And that's because we use a very small quantity and we try and make sure that we use chemicals that you can buy or you can find in your kitchen. Okay, so um, read that special service there. I'm your tutor. Okay, if you need questions, see me. Don't hire somebody. Uh, the 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 academic success center. Well, they're I, they might not be operational this summer. So talk to me uh, if you have uh, special accommodations because you're a DSPS student. Let me know. Okay, we need to make sure that you exercise that accommodation. There is no science club um, this summer, okay? So um, make sure you read this. There's a bunch of questions in your syllabus quiz on honesty conduct. You gotta make sure that you know what is dishonest and what you can, what is okay. And that's why we have this, this um, page here. What is the difference between collaboration where you're working with others in a progressive style to make sure you understand uh, what's going on and academic dishonesty, okay? If you are passing along work that someone else did, that, that's always dishonest. That's always dishonest. So um, read that because there's a bunch of uh, questions in your syllabus from that. And then this again was the email that the chair sent out because someone was uh, hiring a ringer to do their experiment. Don't, please don't do that, okay? Now, after that, let's take a look at this right here. This is an important page. What you wanna do is look at each experiment and this is broken down per each wet experiment. 
dry experiment, you don't do, need any chemicals. But wet experiment, and this is experiment number one, experiment number two, and experiment number one is lab number two. Okay, if you go up here, see? Experiment number one, lab two. It's a penny for your thought experiment. Experiment number two is lab three, right here. Okay, so make sure you understand when we, we say lab number, that's just a sequence of all the exercise you're doing versus experiment, which is a wet lab, or a um, activity, which is a dry lab. So here's experiment number one. You will need a 100 mil grad cylinder. You will need a Petri dish, a Burel pipette, and a wash bottle. That's from the KLM. Okay, so that's from the KLM equipment. And then Miramar will give you the acetic acid. We're not using any hydrochloric acid. So if, I think I took it all out in terms of the old lab manual, we're now using vinegar. That's what acetic acid is, okay? Uh, we're using vinegar to do the experiment. Vinegar is just as good an acid to do these demonstration or to do these laboratory procedures as very caustic hydrochloric acid, okay? Um, so that's why we're going with acetic acid and it gets you the same results. The forceps, the digital, digital pocket scale, the weighing boats, all these are gonna be supplied to you from Miramar College, see? Uh, and then you guys need to supply your pennies. So sometime between now and experiment number one, which is due not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, go to the bank, get a couple of rolls of pennies, $10 worth, because it's very hard to find pre-1982 pennies. You got to find pre-1982 pennies. Why? Because you got to get a range of pennies that stretches between maybe the 70s, 60s, all the way to 2000. Because you want to, you, this experiment's about what happens to the mass of a penny with age. Now, some of you already know the answer, but pretend you don't know the answer. You have to develop a hypothesis, and we offer you two hypotheses, that the mass gets heavier with age. So remember, age is like 1970. That would be like four, 50 years ago. That's an older penny than 19 or, or 2000, okay? So uh, does the, does the weight of a penny increase with age, okay? So you'll see if you go from uh, years, it'll start going down uh, in terms of the mass, then your penny will weigh less than the heavier pennies. Or do you think that the older pennies will be lighter because of um, wear and tear? So you guys are gonna propose hypothesis and then you guys are gonna do the experiment, okay? You're gonna take a range of pennies, weigh them out and see whether one hypothesis is is okay or not. That, that's the experiment, okay? And it will require you to read volumes. It will require you to make careful observations. It will require you to um, take measurements. That, that's critical. So that's that experiment. Uh, second experiment here, second experiment. Let me give you a, let me tell you a secret. That's your SLO, okay? That's the experiment that you really need to understand if you want to be successful in the lab practical uh, for your midterm and your final. So pay close attention to experiment number two. Why? Because that's where you guys learn how to read the uh, graduated cylinder, the ruler, and thermometer based on the graduation of those devices. You can't just say, oh, it's 80 degrees. No, it's like 80.48 or 80.6, depending on the calibration. Yes, you do need pre-1982 pennies. So if you got old pennies, we're not going to ask you to break them up. You just need to weigh them. Okay, five pre-1982 and five post-1982. Okay, so find like 1980 and older and 1983 and newer, basically. Don't stick with 1982. Anyway, um. In terms of experiment, experiment two is really critical. You not only have a 50 point lab on that, but your lab practical depends on experiment number two, as well as the rest of your experiment. So here you can see the breakdown per experiment, what you need from KLM, what you need, what you get from Miramar and what you have to supply, 
what you have to supply. Okay. Uh, when you guys use water, because we can't give you water, try and get distilled water. Reason why you can't use drinking water is because there's chemicals in there. They put maybe chlorine or something, and that's going to interfere with your result. You can go to the grocery store and they'll actually sell you distilled. You know, when you iron, if you have a steam iron, they want distilled water. You don't want any uh, chemicals in there that might corrode the, the, the steam surface. Okay, so get distilled water. You, usually you can get away with a quart, but I think they only sell it by a gallon. So get that and that, that'll be good um, in terms of that. Uh, so here you can see the breakdown for each experiment. And like I said, there's 13 labs, but nine of them, eight of them are wet labs. Number eight right here, or actually number seven is uh, the simulation. Okay, that's the simulation. So you don't need any uh, equipment for that. You just need your computer. Then these are the chemicals that you will need for each experiment. Okay, so what ha will happen when you guys pick up your kits tomorrow or Friday, it'll be in individual baggie. And experiment one will be in one baggie, experiment two will be in another baggie, experiment three will be in another baggie. You want to take each baggie, separate them out, and double check the inventory right here for the chemicals. Okay, because if you're missing any of the chemicals like we did last semester, they didn't have sodium hydroxide, so they couldn't do the experiment. So we have to improvise. Um, then you can't do the experiment if you don't have it. So these are the chemicals right here per experiment. Okay, here you actually need to, you, sodium chloride, that's stable salt. You have to provide your own so, sodium chloride and baking soda. Everyone has baking soda. Arm and Hammer baking soda, that, that's, you guys need to provide that. Okay, so that, that's the breakdown for each experiment. And then this one is a matrix of what, here's the equipment from KLM right there. This is the equipment from Miramar College, including the scale, including the scale. So we give you 11 and um, KLM gives you 18, but for experiment one, you guys will use the Petri dish, the graduated cylinder, the wash bottle, um, weighing boats, forceps, metric ruler, and the scale. Okay, so, so I try and make this as easy as possible in terms of what equipment you will need per experiment, okay? Um, yeah, $10 is good enough. If you want, if you can find, if you have around your house five, actually you need 25 pre-82, so yeah, uh, because the second part of the experiment will require you to weigh 25 pre-1982 to, uh, this is in the chat, um, once you guys wait on that, those questions, kind of put them on and then I'll answer it at the end of our discussion. That way I'm not sidetracked. It's already 847. Okay. And I only wanted to do spend one hour on this thing. So this breaks down per experiment, what equipment you guys need. Okay. So hopefully it's easy for you to recognize what equipment and chemicals you need per experiment. Okay. I tried to make this as easy for you as possible. And then finally here, is what they look like. You guys need to buy your own safety goggles and we do provide you the straw, but this is basically all the equipment that KLM will offer, as well as the equipment that Miramar will give you. So the first half, like the, the top portion right here is basically from KLM. The bottom portion down here is basically from Miramar College, not, not including the uh, test tubes. Okay, so that's what they look like. That's the picture. And then we're done. So let me go ahead and um, I want to go into Canvas real quick because this is critical. So uh, in Canvas, again, you will see the announcement page, the syllabus. This is where you're going to spend your time, the module page. Okay, um, this right here tells you the, uh, get you back to the home page that opening line here, information about the class. You click on this, this is a lab manual that you can download as a PDF. 
Okay, this gives you a link to my homepage. This right here is the link to the Zoom videos that I've recorded for the different activities and the experiments. So if you click on that, go here, it takes you to the playlist of all the, um, the videos that I've recorded. Now, remember I told you that this course is over, uh, the development of this course is like oh, about 15 years. So some of these, these videos are a little bit older. That's before we had 4K resolution. So you're gonna to have to bear with me about the resolution on some of this, but I basically just film myself talking in front of my class because the concepts are not so different. Yeah, I was young back then. I still had a lot of gray hair though. But um, the that's why it's so neat because the experiment that you guys are doing at home are the same experiments that we do at Miramar College. Why? Because for the longest time, me and another colleagues were the only chemistry professors at Miramar College. So we had the freedom to design our experiments. Anyway, um, you can look at this playlist and review them. And the playlist is, you don't have to go here to find the playlist. You can actually go to the experiments in the modules. And I actually compiled it for you, okay? So this is week one. You guys are gonna do the safety. Watch the safety video right here. Uh, when you guys want to expand this, just click on that little thing and you get a full version, okay? Um, and make sure you read that and then work on the safety quiz. And the safety quiz, let's take a look at it real quick. Um, let me open that up so you guys can see. That's this right here, 50 points, 60 minutes, it's timed. Uh, you open that, you open this and here is what you need. At the end of the safety quiz, you need to take a photo, safety photo, and you need to have your college ID or some ID, okay? It needs to be in that, in that um, photo. You've got to be present as well, so I know who you are and that you are doing the experiment. The chemical lab kit from KLM, it doesn't have to be scattered, just the box open. Uh, the chemicals from Miramar, that'll be a big baggie and you just have to put that in front as well. And then you need some sort of lab coat or apron, safety goggles, uh, surgical nitro gloves, fire extinguisher. If you don't have a fire extinguisher handy and you live in an apartment complex, then take a picture of that fire extinguisher and then send it in a separate uh, photo. Okay. You need baking soda and you need a first aid kit. Okay, why do we need baking soda? Baking soda is basically what fire extinguishers are made of. Okay, when they blow out that white powder, the baking soda extinguish the flame. We use baking soda to extinguish fires. Uh, and then a first aid kit. So, so you need these because you need to submit a photo uh, having all of this as part of your safety quiz. Okay, if you do not do this, then your safety quiz is uh, incomplete and you won't get credit and you won't get full credit for any experiments that, that doesn't have the safety photo. Okay. And then you have these questions here. The first one's just a disclosure saying that you agree with the safety and honesty, and then a whole bunch of true and false questions, a bunch of fill in the blanks. And uh, actually they're all true and false. Okay. They're all true and false. So it should be straightforward, but you do need to upload these things, okay? It's gotta be a PDF as well. That's critical. Without that, it's an incomplete uh, safety uh, requirement. And if you don't have the safety requirement, I'm not gonna let you complete the lab, okay? Uh, then as we go down here, you have your math basic. Math basic is a dry lab. The first part of any activity is the information these are my previous lecture on dimensional analysis, exponential notation, rounding off, okay? Uh, and then this is the description. This is from the lab manual. This is the lab manual, or actually this is my PowerPoint, okay? This is my PowerPoint. And then um, this right here is, let's go back over here, is the worksheet. Okay, and the worksheet is again, what you guys will fill out. And you should practice this or complete it, but what you really need to do in all of this in order to make it to streamline the grading 
if you actually have to go here and answer these questions. Okay. And if you take a look at the worksheet, take a look at the worksheet real quick. They're practically identical. So if you do it on the worksheet, then you can just put your answer. Let me just go over here and uh, show you the worksheet. So the first question here was round off to the 10th, 21.46499. If you take a look at the canvas, round off to the 100th, 21.46499. Same number, one says the 10th, the other says the 100th, okay? Round off to the 10th, 482.4506. You look at the worksheet, round off to the thousand. So it's the same exercise, same number. I just, what happens is that because we've been doing this lab for so many times, there are papers out there that are practically identical. We don't want you to just turn in another paper. We want to mix it up a little bit, okay? So um, yeah, the syllabus quiz is not released until after the orientation. That's why you don't see it. I didn't want anyone to do the syllabus quiz until we discuss the syllabus, okay? Uh, so this is it, you complete it here, but you fill it in here. And then the very last question in all these dry labs is upload your worksheet, okay? Upload your worksheet, you click right here, and then it'll give you a link under student view where you start the assignment and then you just find the file, it's gotta be PDF and upload it, okay? So that's your dry lab. Um, then if you, let's go back to module. Let me talk to you about your experiment. Talk to you about your experiment. Uh, leave student view. So dry lab is uh, number one, lab number one. And then you have a bunch of dry labs over here on nomenclature, um, week four, okay. At lab number six, lab number seven, and lab number eight are all dry labs. Okay, so there's just one sheet of paper, but you have to complete, to complete the exercise, you gotta complete it through Canvas. Okay, you gotta complete it through Canvas right here. Okay, so, so those are the dry labs. Let me talk to you about the wet labs and this will take a little while and I see that we're ready. This will be another maybe 10 minutes. So if you just bear with me, this is the most critical part anyway. So for the experiment, here's, in week two, these are the two experiments that are required. Let's take a look at the penny lab. If you take a look at the penny lab, again, this is the information. It tells you where you can find the experiment. If you click on this, basically pulls the um, experimental, experimental procedure from the lab manual. It's right here, the whole thing, just on this one file. The data sheet, the worksheet is all in there. And then, what you can do is, let's go back over here under the penny lab. You can pull the worksheet for the pre-lab only, the data sheet and the post-lab. Okay, these are the three that you guys need to turn in. The pre-lab and the post-lab, you sort of complete it, okay, and you submit it. And some of these will require you to do it via Canvas, okay? So like right here, it tells you that this is the pre-lab. You have to complete it through here. And if you filled it out already, then this is what you would complete in um, via Canvas. So all pre-labs and all post-lab, there's a Canvas component. The data and observations, there are no Canvas component. You just upload your, your, your worksheet for that, okay? So this is the pre-lab and then right here, upload the pre-lab for experiment number one. Let's go back. Again, everything's found in the module. That's where you wanna stick for, that's the pre-lab. This is the data and observation. You upload the data sheet here, okay? So you do student, if I do a student view, this is where you start the assignment and then you find your, your worksheet and then you upload it, okay? And then 
finally, let's leave this. It's the post lab. There's, again, only there's always three components, the pre, the data, and the uh, post lab. So if you go to the post lab, let me get out of this right here, leave. Okay. Go to modules. What you will see next is always, it's always called ABC. ABC, pre, data, and post. 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 And the pre and the post are always done via Canvas and then an upload. Okay. So um, again, you will see that uh, that's where you're going to spend a lot of time. It tells you the points for each one. They're not all worth the same amount of points because they have different number of questions. Let's go back over here. Let's go with, do it for experiment number two. Because here, again, the experiment, pre, data, and post, that's the worksheet. And then these are resources that you guys can use, the PowerPoint, the YouTube playlist. And then if you click here, this was my Zoom video from last spring and i know it's small so you guys you guys need to click on that and enlarge it and then just kind of it tells you exactly what you need to do and i i i talk you guys uh feet that are going to be like uh 24 the negative probably one here i am i'm kind of showing you how to read the ruler and how to do the experiment to the one centimeter and then mark 15 but really when i mark this 15 that's actually 14 and then do the same thing here so i, I don't want to listen to myself okay so let's stop this guy from talking so this was the most recent one. And then these are old ones. It basically is the pre-lab discussion for my class. It tells you about how to read measuring devices correctly and how to round off. So these are the resources available. Available. You may elect to um, watch them or not, OK? You may elect to watch them or not. If you are comfortable with just doing the experiment without that multimedia, that's fine. Okay, but again, the the first link in the module, the information right here, the information, that's where you get all your resources and then you start to complete it. When you go to the data sheet, okay, and you submit your data sheet, this is also where you submit your photos. Okay, so it says right here, once completed, upload your data sheet and experimental photos by clicking on the link top right start. Now, this is instructor view, student view will look like this. You click on that and what will happen is it'll ask you to find that file and then submit it, okay? You can either zip it into one file or in this format, you can upload multi-files. You can upload more than one. But within a quiz question, it only allows you to upload one file that's why it's got to be compressed here it's not a quiz question it's just an assignment you can upload multiple pages multiple files so that's okay um, so that that pretty much is it let me just uh leave this and let me just go through the rest of the semester and kind of tell you what what's going on and then we're done okay so again this is week one we're do, just doing safety and the math basics. That's due this Sunday. No wet lab. You don't need equipment or anything. But we need to hit the ground running because we only have eight weeks. Week two, that's where you need your chemical kit, kits. You have two experiments, the penny and the measurement. Experiment number two is very important. Week three, you've got um, a density lab and a separation of a ternary mixture lab, OK? Uh, week four, we've got a dry lab where you do nomenclature and making molecular models. Week five, that's halfway through, we got stoichiometry and the midterm. So you, you only have one dry lab on week five. Week six, we have two experiments. Well, that's counting by weighing. You actually play with Legos in that lab. And 
observing chemical reaction. Observing chemical reaction is probably your most tedious lab. There's about maybe nine steps, but they're all one step reactions. Okay. Uh, week seven, you've got your gas simulation. You do that. And then you have your, you're basically taking salt water and evaporating the water, and then you're weighing the salt. It's a pretty easy lab, but um, it requires you to be precise. And then the last week, you have your titration of vinegar, and then you have your uh, finals. So that, that's the semester, really. Uh, go down here towards the bottom. It gives you some resources, the appendix and everything. But um, that's how you would complete the lab component for this course. OK, uh, again, if you take a look at the syllabus, you can see exactly what the experiments are and when they are due. So I hope that helps uh, with what this class is about and what you're in for. If it looks too overwhelming and you need more guidance, then this class may not be for you. But if you like the adventure of kind of like uh, watching a video and, and trying it out and the experiments, like I said, they're not as difficult as you would think. You can do a lot of these experiments 30 minutes to an hour at the most, okay? Usually even less than 30 minutes. And if you watch the video beforehand, then you know exactly what, what um, steps to do, okay? So that, that basically is it. I'm about five minutes over, but if you have any questions, let me know. You can email me and I can see uh, based on the, um, questions. Yeah, you're not going to see the syllabus. Uh, let me just show you real quick where that is. The, the safety quiz is not. Let me just check. Check that real quick before I let you guys go. And here's the safety quiz. And it's, let me just double check, make sure that that thing's released. This thing is released yeah, there is, uh, I guess that's the reason why it tells you a due date, but it doesn't give a release date. Let me just do that. Yeah, that's probably why it didn't work. Okay, now you guys should see it. Okay, yeah, I put the due date, but I just didn't put the uh, availability date. I thought that if I left that blank, it would just be available. No problem, but I guess not. Uh, you guys should be able to see that now, okay? I should go back through each one of these and make sure that there's an availability date. Uh, if there's no other questions, uh, one, one more thing I forgot to mention. Tomorrow or Friday, if you pick up the, the kit, Bryce told me he'll have it ready for you. Take a white sheet of paper, write your name. Okay, write your name, your, write Chem 100L, I'll put this in announcement as well. And then the CRN of the lab you are in, it's either 61184 or 61197. There's, there's two lab in one shell. And then your CSID. I know some of you don't have your uh, college ID, but you do have a CSID. It's going to be in your register or when you log in, you'll be able to see that. We need to make sure that we identify the correct person who, who has the chemicals. And so that... Um, I know you're, you're, you're fine with, with getting the equipment. So, and then take this white sheet of paper and then hand it over to Bryce tomorrow. That way he doesn't have to spend so much time writing everything down. Okay, he, uh, he'll have a sheet of paper there with all the inform, important information and then he can put it on a spreadsheet and then give it to me. So make his job easier. Okay, your name again, full name, your right below that CH100L and then the CRN of the section you are in and then your CSID. That's all I need. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, uh, thanks for hanging out and I appreciate you guys uh, attending. And um, I'll put in an announcement again, what is required to hand over to Bryce. And then sometime maybe later this week, if you have any questions, we can Zoom again, okay? The, the Zoom meetings are totally optional, but I do, I wanna mention, I do record them so that people who are not available or, or tied up can watch them or you can go and review them, okay? So thank you, have a good evening and welcome to the class, okay? I'm here to help you. Uh, I really want you guys to be successful but do it in an honest way 
and always practice safety in this class. Thanks again.